Oh, hi. I'm Will Hungerford, lead developer at Privateer Press. And with me is my lord and master. Oh! Oz wow. Schoonover. I got another promotion. It's, it's exciting. Development overseer. Mm -hmm. And we are your development team here mm -hmm. at Privateer Press. Welcome. This is the dev chat for September 11th, 2019. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to be talking about the first three models coming out in Wave 2 of Riot Quest and going over their Riot Quest rules and their gear cards, talking to all of you, answering some questions that you all have as we are live on Facebook and Twitch, mm -hmm. and just generally having a good time. Yeah. So, um, Real fast before we get started, for those of you who don't know, some exciting news. We are now taking subscriptions, subs, on Twitch. That is a new thing that just got added. Um, so we're just getting started with it. It's kind of a big deal. Uh, the people that have joined up already have gotten access to the first six emojis. Uh, we have Hamilton Gubbin, Chibi Defender X, Chibi Gorgadra, the Formula P3 logo, and a Chibi Amademos. Yep. As we get more subs, we are going to add more emojis. We're also going to do special things for our subscribers in the future. So if you're watching us on Twitch, definitely subscribe today. And it is September right now, so you have until September 24th to get half price subs. I think it's like two fifty instead of normal five bucks. And if you are a Prime subscriber, they give you one Twitch subscription for free. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't cost you anything. You can click subscribe with your Prime subscription and give us a little, a little bit of money just by, by doing nothing. Just by doing nothing. Yeah. Just yeah. being a bro. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about Mini Crate real fast before we get into today's topic. Uh, right now, the current War Machine of Hordes Mini Crate is the Brew Bear, the alternate mm -hmm. Rune Bear. Uh, she's available till September 19th, and the VIP model, the one you get when you do a six-month sub, is the Trancer Dancer, and will be for some time to come. The yep. Legend of the Five Rings mini crate, though, just swapped over. It's a, a Sawa Tadaka? A Sawa Tadaka. Yeah, Sawa Tadaka. Nailed it. Sure. Of the Phoenix Clan. Uh, and it just became available. So you have until October 5th. Um, Sadako is your VIP model whenever you do your six-month mm -hmm. sub from you Scorpion Clan fans out there. Uh, Big news for the Savage Mini Crate today? Question mark is the last day to get Solomon yes. Kane. Yeah, because he's he's swapping out some point tomorrow. So if you want Solomon Kane, uh, I recommend you order it today or early tomorrow. And of course, King Conan is the VIP yeah. model for doing a six yeah. month sub. And, and we're barely even halfway through because Solomon Kane was the second it's, model. Yeah. So yeah, that six months. Is, is still early, so you got a lot of time on King Conan, but you don't have any time on Solomon Kane. Uh, Carchef Zero on Twitch says, Watch the staff showdown on the YouTubes last night, and I gotta say, I like Faye, such a great personality. Faye is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason you're seeing Faye going to be appearing on more and more yeah, streams. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to get a few more people, especially on those staff showdowns, yes. that, that both have, have the presence on camera. Because sometimes when you're on camera, you forget you're on camera, and you know some people are not used to it. But also, who are comfortable enough playing the games? So we're we that's like your Riot Quest game a while ago had Jeff and Lauren also. So yes, it did. We're doing a little bit more with those staff showdowns to introduce you to a few more people that work here. It also makes sense uh, for Faye in particular, being that she's the uh, the lead playtester. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Faye's she, very very primary in the playtest process for Monster Pocket. Prolific. Yeah. Even. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I lost my train of thought. Oh, I talk about the stream schedule. <laughs> so the stream schedule. You're watching uh, Dev Dev Chat, Dev Hangout. Uh -huh. That happens every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Get your paint on with Jordan is on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, where Jordan gets on here and paints and talks to you mm -hmm. about hobby tips and tricks. The next staff showdown will be October 1st. We haven't announced what we're playing yet. Maybe Riot Quest, maybe Monpoc, maybe Scrappers, mm -hmm. uh, maybe War Machine Mark One Steamroller Two, uh, epic level, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, playing 750 points um, mm -hmm. so that I can play Morgul 2. Uh, and knows? who knows? Yeah. The next hobby hangout is this Friday on the 13th. Uh, it's going to be held by uh, Brian McLaughlin and co hosted with Danny Samuels. He's already lost his main host spot <laughs> after two shows. So I'm going to rib Danny about that as hard as I possibly can. <laughs> Uh, Gwynevere17, thank you very much for the sub via Twitch Prime. We appreciate you. Um, Gwynevere! Are we doing that? Ham Hamilton. We, what we need... Hamilton sounds. Before we get into today's topic, because every every Twitch show does something when somebody subs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
And like while we're doing battle reports, we're doing like the weekly rumble stuff. We can't be yelling out people's names and squeezing pigs the whole time because like people are like trying to follow the oh, action, and no. we're like, hey, ah, ah, ah. right? No, that is the action though. We are the action. We should, need. Should I just collect a list and then you call it out at the end? No, we need like an Angel Fires Geo Cities dancing pig <laughs> uh-huh. that we pops do. up on the screen, yeah. and then their name shows up and like a little thing plays. Yeah. And we we are just like one day into submissions. Yeah, we are literally one day into submissions. So, so we. We will have more stuff roll out, and maybe crazy, crazy dancing asphyxius is the is is the thing we'll do someday. Yeah. But for now, what we're gonna do is when people uh, subscribe, we will try to catch you like untra- unplayable yeah. trash panda, yeah. like unplayable <laughs> trash panda, <laughs> unplayable trash panda just subbed. Uh, that's all I gotta say about that. Uh, but we'll we'll figure something out. And like I said, there'll be cool stuff coming for subs in the future. But right now, it's just a way mm-hmm. to show some support, show some love, and get yourself some cool emojis. Mm-hmm. So. Riot Quest Wave 1 is out. That is from the starter box through Black Bella. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry, that's all coming out this month. October is... Is it? Yeah, October is the beginning of Wave 2. Okay, yeah. So the last few models out of Wave 1, Widget, Bella, Boomhaller, Gorman, uh, those are all all coming out. And then Wave 1 will be done. Wave 2 is October, November, and December. We've got nine new heroes, two big expansions. the reason we're sort of doing them in waves is because it's very easy as a player to sort of know, A, when did something come out? Yeah. When is something coming out? Like, oh, that's a wave three release. That's a wave four release. And also, for a lot of people are saying they want to collect entire waves. And this gives you a very easy way to yeah. just sort of visualize what came out in each sort of little mini block of, of Riot Quest. Mm-hmm. It's, it's more of just a... A collection tool and a cool way to be able yeah. to talk about things. Yeah. So now that the December solicitations have gone out, people have seen all of Wave Two. That's going to have like the new Hole Grinder map that got posted mm-hmm. on Twitter, mm-hmm. the Neoprene map, of Thunderstone Fortress. It's going to have the two first big expansion boxes: the Spawn Gate expansion and the Treasure uh, Chest expansion. Yep. Which come with new bounty and treasure decks, as well as new heroes in mm-hmm. them. That's where Flugwug and Wind will come. Yep. Uh, this wave has Leadfoot and Treads, Boss McHorn, Master Gurgle Pox. Yep. Just uh, Destructotron 3000. Uh, it's got a lot of really cool and fun things, and we'll talk a lot about those coming up in the future on future Dev Chats. But what we want to talk about today is the first three, which is uh, Captain Crawtooth, Wolf with No Name, and Orsus the Chain. And specifically, we want to show you their Riot Quest uh, hero cards for all of you out there playing Riot Quest, and mm-hmm. also show you the gear cards that come in each blister. Talk about the design ideas behind each. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Anything you want to add to that? No. Sean, Seanster 3000 really likes Destructotron 3000. I, I feel like the name connection they do. Might, might be a serious, serious thing. Uh, something really cool has been the response. Yeah. Now that RyQuest is out and more important people are starting to get at their local stores, uh, for those of you who don't know, there is a RyQuest general Facebook group that you can go join. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's over 800 people now. Uh, that's where a lot of the news gets posted, people posting pictures of their games, pe- people posting yeah. like battle reports and painted models and stuff like that. Uh, and it has been amazing to see people embrace the game for, for what it is, which is yeah. quick, easy, kind of chaotic, but fun and with enough player decision that it's not like you're not just along for the ride, like you yeah. have some control. And it's 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 cool seeing people have a blast with it, and more importantly, a lot of people are playing with their kids and playing with their friends yeah. who don't play a lot of uh, games generally. And it's fun to see the community growing and more people being yeah. like, "Oh, what is this stuff?" And a lot of people are blowing their gubbins up by attacking people, <laughs> which is great. Gubbins just dying constantly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although era, the treasure chest expansion pack got solicited, and everybody got their first look at the full model of uh, Flugwug. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people, I think Gubbin might have a, he might have some competition yep. in the cutest yeah. Riot Quest character that people want to, to collect in, in Flood. Well, it's filter. also another small green character, more than likely. Is that what it is? Is it, like the, is it the Yoda I, I think it's just, it's just small green things, you know, they're, they're they, they have a certain draw. Sure? Yeah. Is your dog green? No, okay. no, no, no. So... Let's take a quick look at the models themselves. Mm-hmm. Tony, give me the model cam. And we can see uh, the, the three models coming out at the beginning of October. First we have Orsus the Chained. I'm going to move these other two yeah, for yeah. a second. So you, we, have, we have shown these off in various capacities before. But yeah, this is, this is Chained Up Orsus. 
with uh, with bits and pieces of his Warcaster armor. What's left of it? Yeah, he's got like the neck piece and the glove. <laughs> And his fell axe. And yeah, he's got what used to be Lola, but it's now is uh, fell much, Lola. much scarier. And and he is, it is changed to him. He is basically a Doom Reaver. Yeah. So, so that's him. Go and show us, uh, let's look at uh, Wolf with No Name real fast. And you will probably need to tip the model yeah, up to get yeah, a good yeah. look, just because so, he has the classic like hat down, yeah. you know, look, look on. So that got, rifle is enormous. He's got a, a cigar you can see sticking out there. And then he has this. Uh, Patrick Johnson, where can I find the full list of Wave 2 and Wave 3 models? So right now, RiotQuest.com, the main website, has the Wave 1 models as well as the tutorial and the rules PDF. Uh, we will be adding Wave 2, the Wave 2 gallery, to that soon. And we're going to look at some, adding some more functionality, actually, to that website when you might potentially click on a hero. But that's all very much in the works right now, so I can't guarantee anything on, on what we'll, we'll be doing there. I can tell you that we are planning to put all the Wave 2 models up, uh, model renders and our miniatures. Uh, and then Wave 3 will probably be put on the website, I'd say, closer to December. Sure. Yeah. Captain Crawtooth. This is the Captain one Crawtooth that... Captain Crawtooth has been painted slightly. Danny, this is not yep. the studio model. This is the one Danny painted on uh, Get Your Paint On uh, two weeks ago. Look at, look, at, look at this. Look at this hook. It's so big. It's like, it's like bigger than Gubbin. But yeah, this, this is Captain Crawtooth. This is the model from this wave I'm the most excited to paint. Because he's got lots of cool texture and that yeah. big giant hook and his funny little hat. He's busting through his jacket. And he's busting through his jacket. Well, you know, it wasn't designed for, for gator kind. It's, a, it's probably a people jacket. And uh, He's scavenged. Brian Dugas did this one. Brian Dugas mm -hmm. uh, always does amazing sculpts. We have some really yeah. great sculptors. Like, pro props to all our sculptors. I know we don't talk about them enough on stream, but, like, these are just great-looking miniatures, right? Yeah. So let's get into the rules for you Riot Questers out there mm -hmm. and start off with, I believe we're going to start off with Orses. Yeah. Unless I completely remember, this, <laughs> I, I completely forgot the, uh, the order. First off, we get to see the full illustration, or I guess the portrait illustration, yeah, yeah. of Butcher looking like a crazy fool. I love his Kator belt buckle. Uh -huh. He's got like a pro wrestler vibe going on yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. I like, also love his, his, uh, his I gotcha. stitches. His stitches don't look very professional. No, like no. Whoever, that, might, that might be beef jerky. Whoever patched him up, yeah, might have used shoelaces or something. So it's it's the apocalypse. You know, you got you, you take what you can get. Yeah. So here we see the second fighter class character mm -hmm. released, uh, Bella being the first. Whereas Bella is your your single target missile. Uh, Orsus is going to get in there and hit a lot of people. So he's mm -hmm. speed four. So, average speed. Yeah. Def 2, 5, which means he is definitely easier to hit. He's very easy to hit. But he is stamina 4, and that is important. Mm -hmm. uh, so, before we talk about Berserker, he's got charge, like all of the fighters. If you move him before you attack, then he gets a red die on all his melee attacks. Mm -hmm. And he's got rage fueled on Fel Lola. So, he gets 3 blue die normally, but he gets plus 1 red die for every point of damage on him. Yeah. And he's stamina 4, so if he's, if he's got 3 damage on him, he's rolling 3 blues and 3 reds for his attack. And he charges... And he charges, so yeah. So if you charge with him, you're gonna roll three blues and four reds. You're just you're hitting whatever you're attacking. That might be the most reds you can roll almost without a, a piece of gear. Yes, he's one of the reasons there are four red dice in the, yeah. the starter set. Yeah. Uh, but you've got Berserker. And just so that everyone understands, understands the difference between Berserker and Explosion, which Gubbin has. Gubbin says when he makes a ranged attack, you roll the dice once, and you compare the results not only to who you targeted, but everyone adjacent mm -hmm. to who you targeted. Berserker says when Orsus makes a melee attack, roll the dice once and compare the result to everyone adjacent to Orsus in addition yeah. to your target. So you're not you're not doing an explosion off the person you're hitting. Mm -hmm. You're making a roll against the person you're hitting and then an explosion off of Orsus. Yeah, and then and really important thing in there, it does say other models, so it doesn't count Orsus. Like no, he doesn't Gubbin have doesn't have an other. Yes, because you are adjacent to yourself in yeah. this game. Yeah. yeah, Gubbin can kill himself. Yeah, but Orsus can't whack himself with that axe. Yeah, or Orsus cannot accidentally whack himself in the head yeah. with an axe. So what does Orsus do, Orsus do from a development standpoint? So in Riot Quest, one of the things that was definitely the most challenging but also the most fun for me in terms of designing was this is there's no point values. So I had to approach this with MOBA-style uh, balancing, which is that you're going to have all these heroes. Anybody can take any combination of them. You can't take mm -hmm. the same hero more than once. And they all have to be, and there's there six classes, everybody's got these roles, but an Orsus has to stand up to a Bella. You know, you can't just have somebody who's just so much better than someone else you wouldn't even yep. look at the other one. 
I fully expect there to be tier lists by the end of sure. the first 30 models. Like, it's inevitable that people are probably going to reach for one model more than another. Yeah. But you want to keep that gap low. And what you do, how you do that, one of the main ways you do that is you, you can have somebody be the same class but fulfill a very different role. Yeah. Whereas Bella comes up and just hits one person very hard and then has that dirty fighter ability that says if you try and run away from her, you take more damage. She's yeah. also more defensive. So she's the more like duelist style warrior but a missile. Orsus is the tank who... Who has a bit of crowd control. Who wants to take damage and then, yeah, wants to... He's the AoE melee, yeah. right? He wants to take damage. It takes multiple hits because you only do one or two damage in this game. So with mm -hmm. stamina four, you're looking at super damaging him twice to get him off the board. Yeah. Like, not easy. Yeah. And then at, once you damage him and get in there, like, he can lay waste to a large group of people. He's also going to play an interesting game with those bounty cards that require you to hit someone or knock someone out or whatever like that. Yes. Like, if, if you have the get lucky bounty card on the table and you're like, well, I'm rolling all these dice in my attack, I'll probably get two super strikes. Do you want to put one damage on horses to get that bounty card? Right. Or do you want to maybe not... <laughs> Because he he only has a two, you're gonna hit him yeah, you're more than likely, him. and you and if you roll enough dice, you've got a pretty good chance of getting those two super strikes. But every time you damage Orsus trivially, yeah, you're punishing you, yourself. You're or maybe, maybe yeah. somebody else in a multiplayer game. It's it's a lot of fun to be like, well, I can shoot Orsus from way over here, and he's got all these other targets, so maybe he won't come after me. Uh, Alec Luda on Facebook says, uh, <clears throat> so in Right Quest, is Orsus's theme Berserker? His love is like a truck. Berserker. <laughs> sure. Let's look at the gear card you yeah. get when you, you pick up the Orsus Blister. Now, reminder, yeah. gear cards are neutral. Just because it comes in the blister with a certain hero doesn't mean you, you can only use it on them. Mm -hmm. Often they are themed after the person they're coming in the kit with, but mm -hmm. these are available for everyone. This is another high-end item. You see it's got cost four, so immediately its power level is going to be much higher. Yep. Uh, that's the amount of loot you have to play. play. Uh, the hero gets one red die on all their melee attacks, and they pick up Rapid Strike. Rapid Strike says they get to make two melee attacks in an activation. Yeah. Normally, you're limited to one attack of yeah. any type. It's a lot like what Gorman does on his base card. He can shoot twice. Boomhaller. I mean, Boomhaller. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Boomhaller can, <clears throat> can shoot twice. So, Fell Charm on, Bo on Butcher, on Orsus, means he can walk up into a crowd if he's hurt. You, if you have the four loot, which is expensive, and you can get the Fell Charm on Butcher, he can make two of those Berserker attacks back to back and just mm -hmm. become a whirlwind of death. Yep. Uh, again, if you put it on, let's say, Bella, and you really absolutely positively need to kill that one person, mm -hmm. like she can just charge in there and swing yep. at him twice, rolling two blues and three reds per attack. Yep. Uh, it's also got other uses sometimes, right? Like you just, you don't have a good, you don't have a fighter out. Your yeah. fighters are all knocked yeah. out. That, that extra red die in melee attacks can make a lot of mid-range melee people really, really good. And this is why people have been like, uh, Dez has a, a dagger. Why does she have a dagger? Yeah. Maybe you end up in a situation where you've got nothing but like gunners and specialists on the board, right? And you're like, I have a fell charm in my hand. I don't have any dedicated melee fighters, but... I need to hit somebody twice to try mm -hmm. and kill him. Yeah. So I'll throw the fell charm on Dez, known for her bazooka, yep. and have Dez run up with her dagger and try and, and pick up the red dot. Yeah, if if you if your enemy, if your opponent has an Orsus with two health left, Dez with a fell charm can probably take him out because she only has to roll a two two yeah, times. Exactly. So there's a lot of flexibility in in what you do with these things. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Fell Charm, like the Dematerializer, those, all the loot that costs four, and there's some that cost five later coming on, but the loot that costs four is usually very powerful because getting four loot, sometimes you get it right out of a treasure chest like that, but yep. often you kind of have to work towards <clears throat> getting four. Like on average, you're either opening two chests or opening a chest and knocking out an enemy mm -hmm. to be able to get four loot and then blowing all of that to be able to get the Fell Charm. But this also highlights how cool specialists are. Yes, because they lower the cost because of all gear by two on themselves and people adjacent Banfist to Banfist likes this card. Because yes, he does. Because it gives him even more movement shenanigans because he hits better and he can push two people in a turn. Yes. And it's cheaper for him. It also gives you a reason to have Widget like fly over next to somebody you want to put this on all of a sudden because that, that positioning and cheapness is a really cool thing about specialists. So Hungerford said this more than once, but every single class and every single hero has a value doing a job. And often you can't just be like, well... I, I take all the fighters because they kill everybody. 
Yeah, you'll that, lose the game. Yeah, that, that team is mixed. It has those specialists that make your cards cheaper and has those gunners that can reach out and hit people from distances it's like and all a, that stuff. It's like a MOBA. You need support. Yeah, you've you got to mix tanks, and match. You need DPS. Uh, speaking of DPS, uh, Mac X Damage, thank you very much for the Twitch mm -hmm. Prime sub. Uh, so let's move on to the next hero we want to show their, their stat cards for, which I believe we're going to do the Wolf with No mm -hmm. Name. Yep. So the Wolf with No Name, Scout, Speed 4, Def 3, 5. That's average. That is the average, not heavily armored defense. But stamina yeah. 4, because yep. he is a big, beefy boy. Yeah. Uh, here we see somebody who's, their, their, before we look at their abilities, their weapons are actually a decent mix. The skin and knife, in case you need to go into a melee, is three blue, which is pretty average. Yeah. And then the long rifle is range four, one blue, two red. Obviously, much, much better at shooting. Yeah. Uh, he has Pathfinder, so he treats all obstacle terrain. That's the hazard stripe terrain as open terrain when moving. So it doesn't count as two spaces for it. Yep. So he can very easily jump into cover. He has Spotter, like all scouts, so he lowers the defense of enemies within two spaces of them against ranged attacks by mm -hmm. one for himself and everyone else in the crew. And then he has Cutthroat that says he gets a red die on any attack yep. if they're already damaged. Uh, so the Wolf with No Name, again, if we look at the previous scouts that, that people have seen, you've got Eris, who is much more about mobility and making people faster. Mm -hmm. You've got Harlow, who ignores cover uh, and has the ability to shoot two people with both pistols. And multiple attacks in a single turn is a power on its own. Yeah. And then you've got the Wolf. And the Wolf can get himself into cover very easily because he ignores the difficulty of moving. But more importantly, the wolf hits, for a scallop, the wolf hits hard. Yeah, and the wolf is a really good finishing model. He is. If, if, you're, if, if your opponent has thrown a govin out there and hit one of their own models with it, then that's a benefit for the wolf that he can, he can totally use uh, to maybe win you the game. Yeah, if somebody's already hurt, you're rolling one blue, three reds at range four. Mm -hmm. if you're, a, so again... As a finisher, like you said, yeah. Wolf comes up and just he gets the job done. Yeah, and that was sort of like the thematic goal with him is he's the guy that comes in and 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 finishes the job. The other thing is we're seeing more heroes with four stamina, those heroes that it, you can't kill necessarily as easily in two hits. Yes, because those the the three stamina heroes, if you get a lucky crit, one more hit will take them out. Well, we but with to, somebody with four, you got a you got a lucky crit twice on them to take them out in two attacks. So they they have a lot more staying power. When you get to uh, when we get to Crawtooth, we'll see his right quest rules. While he's stamina three, he is also quite tanky. Thanks. Yeah, to that. he is, is some innate healing abilities. But let's look at uh, Wolf of No Name's gear card that you get in his blister, mm -hmm. which is the Wrist Spring Holster. Basically, what the Wrist Spring Holster says it says if you put this on one of your heroes and someone targets them with a ranged attack before they make the ranged attack, you roll a red die. They take that much damage, and if that kills them, they don't make the ranged attack. Yeah. So this is a this is a piece of tech. You know, this mm -hmm. is this is this is you are teching against a certain type of group. And remember that, like when you play the game, you see the map, you see the bounties, you see the treasure card. Then you make your crew. Then you make your your gear. Mm -hmm. So if you're playing against, you're expecting like heavy ranged coming. You could throw the wrist spring holster in there and be like, oh, Des shoots me. And there's no range on this. It's global. Yeah. So yeah. It's like. Oh, Des, Des goes to shoot me, I roll a red die. When the red die is one blank, uh, four regular hits, and one super strike. You could just super strike somebody and just kill them. Now, you yeah. don't get a scrap card, because yeah. it's not an attack. But this, as, as uh, Acrostore 4 on Twitch says, the Han, shirt, Han shot first piece of gear, that is literally what this is. Yeah, and it, it's going to almost always be at least one damage. Because that red die averages out to one damage. So... This is just a punishment for people targeting your stuff at range. Yeah. And th that's an important decision to force on your opponent when you're playing a game. And when you're playing a multiplayer game, anything you can do to make the other players more attractive targets than you yes. is totally worth it. It's also one of the, the few pieces of gear that... Um, you want it that you can equip like at the end of your turn without and, having to yeah. wait because you, you need to have it on before mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the players go. Yeah, one of the things I've noticed um, some players making the mistake of doing is they get all that loot and then they put that really important gear on a model and that just paints a giant target on it. Yep. Because it's a piece of gear that, that is like the fell charm or whatever and it's going to make that model really awesome. So then people just blow it off the table because don't leave the butcher with a fell charm on right. the table. 
But this, yeah, Tony's right. You put this on defensively, and there will be more and more of that kind of gear rolling out in the future. There's also too. bounties that require the heroes, it requires heroes to be equipped with gear. Mm -hmm. And this is just a good piece of gear to have oh, yeah, on somebody yeah. to go, go do work. Now, does the specialist ability make it minimum zero? Cost? Minimum one. Minimum one. So, yeah. so you don't get as good a discount when you put this on somebody like Widget. Um, but Twitch chat's it's talking so about how he has a piece of gear that lets him shoot first, but the Wolf with No Names War Machine rules don't have quick draw. And that's true. And that's because the Riot Quest rules and the War Machine rules are different. Mm -hmm. And the gear doesn't always, the gear's neutral. So yeah. just because there's a piece of gear that comes in a blister doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be a rule that appears on the War Machine version of the model it came yeah. with. What would you would want to see what's closer is the Riot Quest rules and the War Machine rules should have a same thematic feel. Yeah, they, they should feel like the same model, but they, they don't have to have anywhere near the same I kind mean, of rules. We could put Pathfinder on a model in War Machine and not have the same kind of ability on yeah. the Riot Quest rules and vice versa because you know Riot Quest rules are three rules per model and much simpler. War Machine rules are far more complex and there will not always be a one to one translation because they're very different games. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But the gear especially, the gear is uh, agnostic to heroes. So I don't translate gear in a blister to being rules on a, a hero's card in War Machine. It just mm -hmm. it's it's not gonna happen in most cases. Uh, let's move on to my favorite and your favorite. Because I'm just totally biased. Well, yeah, you're you're obviously biased. Captain Crawtooth. Yep. Captain Crawtooth is the third fighter in the original 30 heroes. Uh, speed 4, def 2, 5, stamina 3. So he's got butcher stats, but he's stamina 3. It's a little bit easier to hit. Mm -hmm. He has charge, like all fighters yeah. do. He has snacking that says when he hits somebody, after you hit him, roll a red die and heal that much. Yeah. Which is huge. Yeah. Like, it's, it's really frustrating to see your opponent take health, or take damage off of a model. Because sometimes you have to do a lot to get that on there. Mm. And... Sometimes in a multiplayer game, when it's coming around to your turn, you're like, oh, I can get a scrap card because that guy's damaged. And then you activate him and heal him, and then yeah. that, that, that points opportunity goes away. So that's, that's a really powerful defensive ability. Crawtooth is way more tanky than he seems. Yeah. Uh, especially because he's also got a range three melee attack. Yep. That rolls four blue dice. If he's charging, it's four blue and one red. So he's going to hit what he wants. And he's got drag. Drag is opposite of uh, the bazooka on Dez, effectively. It's yeah. the opposite of beatback. If you hit somebody, you can move them two spaces, but you have to move them closer to you mm -hmm. than they began. Another good movement trick for pulling people into death traps or just getting them next to your fighters or the rest of your yep. crew. Or, or dropping them next to Bella so that they have to make interesting decisions about how they move. But at speed four, we're talking run four, swing three, seven mm -hmm. hex range, and then if he hits you, he gets to reposition you and heal. Uh, and at four blue and one red, he may not super damage everyone, but he's going to get a lick yeah. in on most people. The, my, one of my favorite things about Crawtooth is how many good gear choices he has. Because sure. the telescoping blades are the most obvious. Yeah, because he goes to range it five. He makes his range five. He, out, he outshoots a lot of people with a melee weapon. Yes. Like, but there's also, like that fell charm, being able to drag two different people or whatever. There's so many other pieces of gear that, that oh. aren't as powerfully obvious because it's not just the table presence. Fel, I've done really dumb things with Fel Charm on him. Mm -hmm. So I've started an activation with him in range of somebody. Mm -hmm. They were three hexes away. Yeah. I hit them first as my first attack, dragged them two spaces close to me, then moved. Yeah. Then because yeah. I had Fel Charm was allowed to make another attack, hit them uh -huh. again and then dragged them further, basically yep. moving them four spaces in one turn. Mm -hmm. Then I swapped out the Galvanic Repulsor on the gear, and then shove them four more spaces. And basically yep. just grab somebody and was like, you're going eight spaces this way. Yeah. Like, yeah, Crawtooth is incredibly versatile. Obviously, range things don't help him very much. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't get anything out of bang rounds. But there's a lot of other gear that he's, he's really going to like. So don't just, don't just say, well, he gets telescoping blades every game. Play around with different things and try different options. And the great thing about the gear hand is that you're not locked down to any decisions. Yeah. When, if you're playing a full 10 model, 10 card game, you have so many combination options that you could do a bunch of things. And you can bring three or four gear cards and say, Crawtooth is getting one of these situationally how the game works out. And you don't have to make that decision at yeah. the beginning of this is Crawtooth's card. The thing uh, that's fun about this way before we talk about the piece of gear that comes with them is, um, so in Riot Quest, which is Saturday morning car cartoon apocalypse, mm -hmm. if you think of this like a cartoon show, the good guys that we're following every episode is 
uh, Eris, Bamfus, Dreyfus, Dez, Gubbin, and Widget. There are good guys. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the Skeletor crew, the, the bad ones, is Boomhowler, James, uh, Gorman, and Bella. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm missing anybody there. I don't remember. Boomhowler. <laughs> oh, and Harlow. Yeah. Boomhowler, Harlow, James, Gorman, and Bella. That's the bad guys. That's the main bad guys. So imagine every episode you're going to see some combination of them. Yeah. Uh, however, all the other heroes that are coming out are your villains of the week or your wacky heroes. Or your that, weird, yeah, your yeah, weird they, hero that lived in a temple for a thousand years. That they, that they encounter and stuff like that. Yeah. So these three in September, the beginning of, of Wave 2, are three villains of the week. Yeah. Like there would be, on the Riot Quest cartoon show on Saturday mm -hmm. morning in 1984... There would have been a butcher episode. Oh yeah, and there, there, there might have been a butcher like, like oh like a couple the, of episodes in oh, a row, like a mini arc. It could have been the to be continued style. Yeah, where, like, they did like two yeah. or three back to back. Yeah, there probably would have been a butcher arc. Uh, definitely, definitely Wolf would show up every now and then. Mm -hmm. And I think Crawtooth's the bad guy that shows up in an episode, and then he ends up helping the good yeah. guys later yeah. on. But then he becomes a bad guy. Again. When they have to cross the swamp, that's when you meet Crawtooth. Yeah. And then he might pop back up like in the next episode and, and switch sides or something like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it's just kind of cool to visualize that these are mm -hmm. the villains of the week and we're seeing them at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the gear card that you do get in the Captain Crawtooth one. Mm -hmm. And this one is weird, folks. Medicinal Stew. It costs one. Yep. It's got a very simple ability. If this hero is knocked out, it goes to the, your bench instead of the cooler. Now, this has two uses. One is the obvious ability, and one is not so obvious. So normally when you get knocked out, you go to the cooler, and there's a random chance at the end of every round a hero wakes up. So mm -hmm. if you know a hero's going down, or you really just want to be able to bring them right back, you drop the medicinal stew on them. The medicinal stew breaks when they die, goes to your discard pile, but then mm -hmm. that hero goes to the bench instead of the, the, the cooler, and you can spawn them immediately. Yeah, you'll be, you'll be down to less than four heroes so they can come right back up. Yeah, Medicinal Stew basically is a way that says bring a hero that got knocked out right back. You don't have to wait at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing it does, it costs one, and in Riot Quest, if there's gear already on a hero, they can only have one gear at a time, if you yep. put another piece of gear on them, it bounces the gear back to your hand. Yep. The only way that gear gets discarded is it breaks by usually somebody killing that hero or special abilities like Gorman Strip. Yeah. So say the Fell Charms on Butcher. And you need to get the fell charm on Bella, and you've mm -hmm. got the loot. A one cost piece of gear yep. lets you say, I spend one, I put the stew on Butcher, I bounce the fell charm back to my hand, I spend four, I put the fell charm on Bella. Mm -hmm. And that is a sort of unwritten ability of having yeah. a super, super cheap piece of gear like this. It also is a great piece of gear to just kind of play with your opponent's mind. Mm -hmm. Is if you have that model, like that big scary model like Butcher at one hit point, and you put the stew on them, then your, your opponent will get the scrap card for knocking them out. Yeah. But they're not eliminating the butcher necessarily from... No, he's coming right back. Like, if you're, if you're like, well, on my next turn, I'll win the game because the butcher, butcher will do whatever I need him to do. And your opponent's like, well, I have to take out the butcher. Well, this says, no, you don't. Yeah, the butcher comes back, the but he shows up at back. a random spot. He shows up at a random spot, so you've got that of, I can't predict exactly where he's going to be, but there's other movement shenanigans in the game, at, and especially as the game rolls out farther and like lead foot and treads come out and things. Right. There's other ways to get models where you want them to be. So this is a really good, like, I am, I am making it more difficult for your plans to go off. Right. And I'm, I'm setting up myself to still do what I want to do. It's that, it's that save mode kind of thing for, yeah. this hero's not really going to go away. Unless you get rid of the gear somehow. Like, Gorman yeah. shoots them and yeah. kills them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, first off, Quasitor, thank you very much for the subscription to oh. Tier 1. We appreciate you and love you, personally. A um, couple questions in chat. Is this Killingworth's recipe? Uh, no, this is probably Kratos or whoever has it. I don't, it's very, it's very orange. Yeah, it's I very, don't know what it's made out of. Uh, Moon Rock Party on Twitch says, why is it stew and not gumbo? Because uh, medicinal gumbo is uh, it's an un unnecessary adjective. Uh, all gumbo is medicinal. Um, and that's just kind of like, they did a study and science proved that. So mm -hmm. we'd have just called it gumbo. And we thought it'd be cool to give it like, you know, a little fancier name. So medicinal stew, I think really, really works out. And stew, you know, stew could be anything. Yeah. Gumbo's just good. 
so that's the the gear that's coming in with uh, with Crawltooth, and that's the the three heroes and their gear cards we wanted mm -hmm. to cover. So before we get out of here, let's hit up Twitch and Facebook and see if there's any questions. So that that Quasitor question is really interesting. Um, asking if the stew allows the same model to activate more than once. It doesn't because the dice already on a model when they get knocked out Stand don't up. get cleared until the end of the round. It lets them spawn back immediately. Yeah. So if they didn't have dice on, on yeah. them already, they get to come back in. Or if you have Bam Fist nearby and he can walk up mm -hmm. and uh, in power. Yeah. You can, it's you very, but it's, it's very much a protection against the person taking out the one model that you're about to activate that is the like game winning model. Uh, Sinogen asks what our thoughts are on the WTC lists and uh, you know the, the, the diversity. There's been a lot of chat right now, seeing mm -hmm. a lot of memes about hermits and, and clocks. Uh, I'm excited to see everyone play the WTC. Yeah. I'm excited to see which lists come out on the top. I'm excited to hear about the battle reports, uh, see what videos come out of it, uh, see which team wins, and good luck to everyone playing. So uh, we're definitely keeping an eye on the results, and, and yeah. I hope everyone over there has a good time. Uh, Everyone's excited about Destructotron 3000. Matthew Shoup, uh, any CID the rest of the year? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we, we are currently talking about the schedule of CID and when the next one will be. I would guess there's probably one before the end of the year, but we're not, we're not making any locked in complete decisions. Yeah. Because for, for one thing, right now, everybody around here is focused on moving. Yeah, the office is moving. The office is moving. Which reminds me, we're not streaming next week, everyone, yeah. uh, because we're moving. Yeah, so. we are, we are going to be picking all this up and taking it like 20 miles down the road, Yep. putting it all back together, and then figuring out what's going on from there. So our plan is we're, we're not streaming for one week and we're back. Hopefully that plan works out. And then we're, once, we, once we're in the new space and everything's worked out and things, we're going we're, we're gonna to look more closely at the schedule. Uh, Quick story, are all streams canceled or just dev chat? Next week, all the streams are off. That's yeah. just because we're, we're all moving. Everything's going to be in a box for a week. Because not only do we have to tear it all down and transport it and set it all back up, but we also have to get the logistics of who's available for what. Because next week is going to be a lot of, well, can you help move pallets in the warehouse with, you know, with these other three people because we got to get everything moved. So... We're not even maybe available for anybody to be in front of the camera talking when the cameras are set back up. Uh, Andrew Brown, I love my swans. Are we going to see any more Signar characters? I hope so. Yeah. I'd be surprised if we never put out another Signar character. Yeah. But uh, we got a lot of ground to cover before we get back to anything because we don't want to leave something off the table. We yeah. don't want to be like, well, we did 87 models and never did Scorn or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we, the, Signar hasn't been 86. Yeah, is Weird Wendell from Signar? Does that count? Could we like shoehorn him in? No, he's a he's, he's a, like he's a partisan Grimkin. I know, but where was he born? Is he a Signar and citizen? I have to check my notes and check with Matt. So uh, let's see if we got any last questions before we all head out to lunch. Any updated rules for Machine Hordes Butcher 4? I can tell you that his thing where he gets hit and he walks and then hits somebody is now a push, not a move. Uh, I know there was a lot of chit chat about mm -hmm. that. So um, he doesn't take a free strike as you hit him. That was a pretty obvious fix. Um, There's a Monster Apocalypse question in there. Tony's moving the chat a whole bunch. From, from Ryan. Mm -hmm. Is there a future where an agenda comes out that crosses existing models between protectors and destroyers, is Ryan Cartwright's question. Yes. So it is possible that some sort of weird neutral characters might come out for Modpoc. But my plan right now is to not worry about that because there's enough other design space without trying to, to balance a model with every single combination of every single model the entire game. Yeah. Somebody asked, uh, oh, sorry, I love saying his name. Zero 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 one zero 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 U in Twitch. One of our, our new subscribers says Monpok Mercs. Yeah, that's 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 exactly what we were just talking about. Yeah. Um, is it possibly someday we'll play around with the design space of making a model that can be taken in any army? But that's a bunch of balance, and I'm working on all kinds of other interesting options right now that we'll talk about in the near future, hopefully. Um, 
Acrostore wants to know, is there a release date for the Hermit as a standalone model? No release date has been announced. We've announced up through December in mm -hmm. terms of solicitations. Um, and Snow Tiefling asks if Globicus, the Blob Monster, is, is Green Fury. No. Sergeant Titanica is the first Green Fury monster. Uh, Globicus is an unannounced new destroyer faction. We haven't, we haven't completely figured out what we're going to call those blob things. Yeah. Officially, publicly yet. Blob things. Yeah, they're blob things. So, uh, in addition to Green Fury being the brand new protector faction that has never existed before, technically, then the blobs are the brand new destroyer faction. So, Globicus, however his name ends up being spelled, I'm not sure how many B's and things are in there, yeah. then he's going to be a destroyer. Uh, Seanster wants to know, when will Destructor Sean 3K's uh, War Machine rules be spoiled? Uh, it'd probably be a little bit. I mean, he comes out in December, so we got a little bit of time. Uh, let me let me rapid fire a couple of these. Chewy, do we know when the next Legendary Series 75 millimeter model comes out? I don't. That's probably a better question to ask on Get Your Paint On Tomorrow with yeah. Jordan. I think Jordan will have a better idea um, because we mainly know about rules and development. We don't yeah. necessarily know about the yeah. the finer art pieces. Uh, friendly Troll Painter, Monpoc characters in Riot Quest. Uh, I wouldn't anticipate it. It's kind of going to stay in this this post apocalyptic IK storyline. Uh, the the Saturday morning satire version. Yeah. Um, and Exor says, Riot Quest occurs in a future where Infernals won. The other upcoming game occurs in a future where Cirrus won. Is there any crossover between the two? Well, if there was, we couldn't tell you that. Well, that, and that's, that's a ways in the real life future. Yeah. <laughs> Warcaster's, I, not, Warcaster's not coming out for a while, so we're not really going to be revealing a lot about Warcaster's story and other elements. So possibly after Warcaster comes out, there might be a little the bit only of way, so nodding it, yeah. back right, and forth. Right Quest, again, it's a split timeline. It's, it's like yeah. a what if. if yeah. you know, and so like, I think the only conceivable way that you see Riot Quest characters show up in the main timeline is like they were capable of making like an interdimensional portal or like mm -hmm. a time machine or something like that. Maybe and, one of them fell into some ice. Oh, yeah. And then like... Long then, time later, woke and, up. And then jumped timelines? Yeah, yeah. Could happen. They fell into that crazy interdimensional portal ice. Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that name, uh, but someone's asking about Triton Infantry, which is the fish monsters yeah. in Monster Apocalypse. Yes, we announced at Lock and Load, but we didn't have a picture to show off, that the steel shell crabs and the, I believe they were called Psy Eels in the old game. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that name. But the eels and the crabs from um, the first edition of Monster Apocalypse are the first blister pack of Triton's units that are coming out in the spring, probably in the same month as Leviathron, the big armored shark, but maybe not exactly. Schedules always get shifted around. Yeah. And let's get, uh, let's get one last question here from, from Striker911. Mm -hmm. uh, which of these models was the hardest uh, to balance for Riot Quest? Uh, Captain Crawtooth. Uh, kind of had a clear idea of what I wanted to do with Butcher and Wolf and testing, just really tweaked the numbers, like the mm -hmm. amount of blue and red dye and stuff like that. But Crawtooth's healing ability, the way snacking worked, went through a few different iterations. Originally, you had to knock someone out and then it proved to not be useful enough. Originally, it healed a little bit too much. Uh, then we played around with his health and his defensive stats. And so the ability to heal made Crawtooth go through, I want to say that like, Orsha's the Chain went through three or four actual iterations mm -hmm. and Wolf went through like two. Like Wolf was pretty dialed in and, and played yeah. exactly how I wanted to. But Crawtooth went through I think like six or seven versions um, mainly focused around healing and how it affected his defensive stats and his health before we got it to where we we felt it was right. So, All right. That's it. Do you see anything else you want to get before we get out of here? No, but I want to ask you a question. What up, dog? If, uh, if Sir Dreyfus could somehow supercharge his jetpack and he flew backwards around the world yeah. really, really fast. The sun. Enough. No, the... the, 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 the oh, we're going with a, that one. A cane. Okay. If he, flew, if he flew so fast that he could somehow shift the rotation of the planet, yeah. would it change time? Yes. I don't know what would happen. I don't okay. think it would go back in time. Yeah. No, uh, if he goes around the sun, that's a whole different time jump. Like, I don't think he'll be able to, like... Like go get whales in a starship and bring them. Yeah, back that to the would involve to save the day. that would involve traveling around the sun. Yeah, but, I'm just talking about maybe like he wants to save his girlfriend or something. Uh, I don't think Dreyfus ever had one. Uh, mm, sorry, sad, Dreyfus. sad Dreyfus. Sorry, Dreyfus. All right, we're out of here. Come join us tomorrow on the stream. Uh, get your paint on. 
at 10 a.m. Hang out with Jordan and I think I'm on that one, aren't I, Tony? You are on that mm -hmm. one. Woo, what are we painting? Uh, hold on, give me a second. Yep. Uh, I think we're doing horses. We're yeah, doing I horses. Think it's, horses. It's butcher. Yeah, yeah. Sweet, sweet. So come hang out, chat, chit chat about painting stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, don't forget, please subscribe on Twitch. Get up your emojis. The more subs we get, the more cool stuff we get to add. Yep. So And we're going to be asking subscribers like fun polls about about what emojis they want to see and that kind of stuff in the future. So you might have a little bit of control over exactly what emojis we give you in, in, at some point. Yeah. Plus, thanks for the love. Thanks for yeah. the support. We do appreciate it. We'll oh, see you all next time. We just oh, got one. What? Vic to live. Just Vic, subscribe. Vic to live. Just end in the stream. Yep. Vic, Vic to live. live. <laughs> your, your, your face disappeared there for a second. Did it? A little bit. <laughs> so many Hamilton. So many Hamilton. Oh, Vic to live. Just subscribe to put a Hamilton in the chat. Yeah, just one. Unsubscribe. Is it one Hamilton?